Coming up, a segment from KTWU, your source for public television. Afterwards, don't forget to visit KTWU.org to make a pledge to help make more local programming like this. In the 16th season of our series, we brought you a story about volunteer firefighters, showing how many of these volunteers spend a good deal of their time in the spring fighting grass fires. In our next story, we see how ranchers in the Flint Hills set fires intentionally each spring to rejuvenate their pastures. Usually March 20th is the earliest we will start, and that is because we have so many acres to cover. We have to start backfiring, um, protecting the neighbors that don't want to burn, so we'll start really a little too early, but we have to to be able to be done in time to get the cattle in. In late March and early April, it's not uncommon for grass fires to rage across the Kansas prairie. Most of these are intentionally set. In the large pastures of the Flint Hills, the flames consume thousands of acres. On the Highland Ranch, located south of the Kansas Turnpike between Emporia and El Dorado, ranch manager Preston Beeman explains why they burn. We burn for brush control, um, for weed control. The biggest reason is for the gain on the, the yearling cattle that we'll put on it. They'll gain an extra two tenths of a pound a day over unburned grass and basically pounds or dollars. So the more weight you gain, the more money in your pocket. Preston goes on to explain how they ignite the fire and control how it spreads. We use a fire stick, which is a, a piece of pipe, uh, a light two inch, inch and a half pipe. We fill it with gas and uh, in the threads in the end, we um, cut some little slits in there. The gas trickles out and it leaves lighted on fire and the gas trickles out. And we drag out behind a four wheeler or walk and we'll make a fire line down the fence or along a draw next to the neighbor that doesn't want to burn. And we'll come along with the spray rig and, and put that backfire out. We'll try to start maybe early in the morning when the wind is low or the ground's a little, or the grass is a little tough yet, so it's easy to put out, easier to control. If the wind does change, increases or something like that, we've got a better chance of stopping it than we do late in the afternoon when it gets dry and, and uh, you know, the wind has a tendency to change. Once you've, you know, you've got that, that insular row of, of burned earth, then you can go around to the back side, the other side, where the wind is coming across the prairie, and you can set that fire, and it just sweeps in a line until it joins the, the back fire that you'd set originally. A native of the Flint Hills, Stephen Hine looks at these hills with the eyes of a poet. We spoke with him a few weeks after the burning took place, when rains had come to speed the growth of new grass. He sees a miraculous transformation take place each spring on the Kansas prairie. A lot of people talk about how drab it is in Kansas in the wintertime. You know, so there's that long period of waiting. And then the, the rejuvenation that occurs. I mean, it is a miracle. Every spring is a kind of miracle. <laughs> And it's quite dramatic here where in a matter of a week, it goes from brown, dead grass to black landscape to this blossoming, this bursting of, of new life. I mean, um, it doesn't get any more dramatic than that, I don't think. <laughs> This poet of the prairie has written a number of poems about the Flint Hills, and he's read a lot of what others have had to say about them, too. He understands why they're so unique and why they still exist in their present form. Well, the thing that everybody writes about is the accident. Uh, it's, the soil is deep enough to, you know, it's not desert. Uh, it's deep enough to support uh, a rich and luxuriant life system, and yet you couldn't plow it. 
if it could have been plowed, it wouldn't be here. But because you've got this skin of land on limestone, uh, the farmers didn't develop it. But you've got this incredibly rich life, which was discovered very early on, I guess. The Texans brought cattle up here, I guess, before the Civil War. And what they discovered was that these cattle gained weight so fast in the summertime on this grass. Blue stem uh, is a high protein grass. And apparently the grass has the ability to extract nutrients from limestone. The limestone I read in one book is, has a sort of sponge like quality so that all this extra moisture it's getting, it can hold a lot of it and the blue stem can extract that so that it has a growing season that that extends beyond the actual rainfall. So it's just always all this wonderful convergence of phenomenon that created a, a very a unique landscape, no question about it. This landscape would not remain the same if flames didn't dance across it periodically. Without fire, it probably wouldn't be prairie because the woody plants and trees would, would take it over. We do it in the spring for uh, a couple of reasons. You're waiting, you're trying to get some the weeds and your buck brush and some, gra some of your uh, stuff you don't want to kind of get started. And so you want to burn them off and that'll set them back and hopefully keep them from getting established. So the spring has always been that time of year. Although some things about burning have stayed the same over the years, new technology, such as the off-road vehicles called four-wheelers, has had a significant impact on the process. Well, years ago, you talked to these guys and they used to, everybody burned and it wasn't backfiring. So they'd just go out on a horse or, and just drop matches and it would, the fire would burn and burn and eventually it'd, get, it'd go out and that was it. And now with neighbors coming in not wanting to burn, maybe this year, not next year, um, we have to do a lot more backfiring and a lot more of that kind of stuff. And we need the four-wheelers for that because you, it's too much to walk. They'll go a lot of places, you know, where pickups won't, and uh, so that's why we use them so much. When it's time to burn and there's a lot of ground to cover, Preston Beeman notes that it's not uncommon to continue beyond sundown. In some cases, ranchers prefer to burn at night when the wind subsides and the damp air makes the burning less intense. The night fires provide dramatic scenes for visitors passing through or for those who come out specifically to view this springtime spectacle. It is really kind of enchanting. You get out here and, and you see these fire lines that will extend for miles uh, against the night sky. The sort of jaws of fire will work their way up a hill from multiple sides, you know. I mean it's it really is a, a magical kind of an event. Glad you could stop by to see a clip from KTWU. It's your input that helps make public television great. Consider a donation. Browse over to ktwu.org right now.